All right. Today's、mm. article begins、mm. with the sentence: "Imagine、okay. that you were born without the sense of sight." Can you can you do that? Where are you? <laughs> There you go. Is that you? All right. So what you can see what Mike is doing here. He's imagining. I guess I should close my eyes、mm. to get more of a. Ooh, wow, that's、mm. hard. Okay. Well, imagine is spelled I M A G I N E. Imagine, and it's a verb. Okay. So when you imagine something, you form a picture or an idea about something in your mind. And you try to think about what this thing would be like. So、mm. think about what it would be like to be blind. You can close、mm. your eyes and pretend not to see. Now here we can use imagine in an example sentence. When Jason was a kid, he liked to imagine that he was a pilot and could fly around the world. Hmm, interesting. We、mm-hmm. often imagine things that aren't there,、mm-hmm. or we haven't experienced, or we've never、right. really seen. You know, you wouldn't say, "Imagine you're walking in a Seven Eleven." That, that's, that's I do that of, every day. Yeah, it's not that special, but right. writers, right? They、mm-hmm. often imagine worlds, like J.K. Rowling imagined the school for magicians,、Wizards. and it was all created out of her mind.、That's、How amazing!、Right. Anyway, so imagine. You can't see. Think about what that would be like. Next, it says, "How would you understand what someone meant if they used the word yellow or blue, for instance?"、Mm, now、All、that、right. is a good question. Yeah, well, often when we imagine not being able to see,、mm-hmm. we think about how hard life would be, or、right. how your life would change, how scary it might be to walk down the street. But wait a minute. Yeah, what about colors? If someone said, "Hey, look at that nice blue sky," or "Oh, it's a red light," how would you know what blue or red actually are? That's a good question because、huh. I can see the colors, right? Sure. So I know what they look Absolutely. like. Absolutely. But if I was blind, I would have no idea how to answer this question.、Yeah. Fortunately.、Huh. Someone is trying to do something about this. Good. Now the article says the award-winning book, The Black Book of Colors, answers these questions by expressing the qualities of colors through different senses.、Mm. Now there's a lot to talk about in that sentence.、Mm. We're going to start with the adjective award-winning.、Mm. Now this is made by combining a noun, award. With a verb, winning, award-winning. Now it describes something. In this case, a book that has won an award. So an award-winning book is a book that has won an award.、Mm-hmm. Here's another example. All the people on this TV show are very good-looking.、Mm, maybe they're award-winning actors and actresses、mm-hmm. too. We use award-winning, of course, for you know Oscars, things like that. People can be、mm-hmm. award-winning, right? We、That's、could say、right. Ang Lee is an award-winning movie director、mm-hmm. from Taiwan. Just means it's won awards, it's won a lot of praise and some prizes, so it must be good, right? Right. Well, this award-winning book expresses some of these ideas of not being able to. See to express something. E X P R E S S. To express E X P R E S S is, of course, a verb. It's to basically to say what you are thinking or feeling.、Mm-hmm. All right. If you're communicating, you're probably expressing an idea or a wish or a need or something like that. You can express yourself with words, of course, but artists will also express themselves through dance or painting or music or、mm-hmm. poems or anything like that. If you're getting out what you feel, what you're thinking, if you're getting that out, you're expressing yourself. Hey, we have. An example sentence. We do. It reads: Tara's teacher encourages her students to express their opinions, and then they discuss their ideas together. Their opinions, their ideas, what they feel about important things.、Mm-hmm. Okay, so we're talking about what the book is expressing, and it said it's expressing qualities of colors through different senses. Now, quality is a noun. It's spelled Q U A L I T Y. Quality, and when we talk about the qualities of colors, we are talking about the things that make these colors different from one another. This can be a lot harder to do when you can't see the color, which is why you have to use your imagination, which is the noun form of imagine. Here's quality used in another way: the scientists studied the plant's qualities to learn how it could help treat disease. 
All right, back to the article.、Mm -hmm. A very nice book.、Mm. Anyway, the article says its raised pictures are combined with traditional and Braille texts. Right. Ah,、uh, this is a big important difference between a book for people who can see、mm -hmm. and for people who can't. They have these pictures. Combined with traditional and Braille texts.、Mm -hmm. Now you probably don't know if you can see that、no. on there, but if something is raised, as the letters on this page are raised, that means they're slightly higher than the surface or the area around it. You could call a hill an area of land where the land is raised compared to the area around it. If something、mm -hmm. goes up, it's raised. If you ever hit your head, you might find a bump on your head,、mm. a small area of your head where the Skin is raised because blood's rushed there because you've hurt yourself. But basically, it just goes up a little bit higher. And of course, when you're blind, if you can't see, you can still feel. That's right. And that's how people will be able to read the letters by touching these raised dots.、Mm -hmm. Now, it also has traditional text. We said、okay. that it has the raised、no、pictures、mm -hmm. that are combined with、mm. two different texts. Now we're going to look at the verb. Combine. It's spelled C O M B I N E. Combine, and when you combine two different things, you make them work or exist together, or you join or mix them together. We've joined the traditional text with the Braille text. <laughs> That's funny. Now, in an example sentence, we could say, "If we combine our efforts and research, we might get this project done a lot faster." Hmm. Very,、mm -hmm. very cool. The, they're raised, but but just a little bit. Just a little bit,、yeah. not very much. And、mm -hmm. if I knew what I'm looking for, it would make a lot of sense. Of course, I'm trying to use my fingers to read, or I could use my eyes to read the words. But if we're reading a bunch of words that are written down on a page in a book, we would call that text. That's、mm -hmm. basically what you read when you're reading a book, a magazine, a newspaper, even the writing on the internet. We would call that text. We often use this when we're We're talking about designing the page. The text goes here. The pictures go there. So、mm -hmm. it's the way we would separate something that would be a picture with something that would be sentences, letters, words, paragraphs, and things like that. For example, this children's book has more pictures than text because kids find the pictures more interesting. I should spell that. T E X T. Text. T E X T. <laughs> text. It's pretty simple. And of course. It's a noun. Back to the article. Okay. Well, the article next tells us this helps capture a vibrant world for both blind and seeing readers.、Mm. Okay. Now, this adjective "vibrant" it's、mm. pretty interesting. Yeah. Vibrant can mean two different things. It can mean full of energy in a way that is exciting and attractive. So, a vibrant world is an exciting world that has lots of exciting things happening.、Mm -hmm. But when vibrant is used to describe colors,、mm. it means that the colors are bright and strong, like、mm. a bright red、mm. of a strawberry or something like that. Nice. That's、mm -hmm. a good example. All right. Their next sentence tells us about who created this amazing book. It says the book, written by Menena Cotton and Rosanna Faria, is about a boy named Thomas. Who is describing colors? Now you might see in your article also we have this little grammar point that says that that same sentence could also be said or written another way. We could say the book, which is written by Menena Cotton and Rosanna Faria, is about a boy named Thomas who is describing colors. Notice that which is right before we get to. Who wrote the book? Written by Menena Cotton and Rosanna Faria. That's just another way of basically pointing out to us that these are the authors. These are the people who wrote the book. You could say, for example, this film, which was shown last week, or you could say this film shown last week. Basically, you're kind of saying the same thing, just with a little bit more information. Now tell us about Tho Thomas, All、right. who's well, the main character in the book. Yes, he is using. Not sight to describe、mm. the colors.、Mm -hmm. The article says he uses all of his senses to do this, except sight.、Wow. So he's using the other four, but he's not using sight like a blind person might. Imagine, imagine、mm -hmm. trying to describe the colors of a rainbow. I'm going to make you do that later. Without using <laughs> the colors of a rainbow,、mm -hmm. that's amazing. As the article tells us. This makes both blind and seeing readers think about colors in terms of smell,、mm -hmm. hearing. 
taste and touch the other four senses、mm -hmm. that you're left with without sight. That's very, very difficult. We have this phrase here, "in terms of." Now we use this this phrase "in terms of" when we're talking about specific cases or specific things that we're describing that we're talking about. Here we're talking about the senses. Okay, so when we're talking about the senses, we're talking about the specific senses, the four that are left over. All right, so we're talking about think about color. But in this way, in terms of the senses, all right. For example, think about food in terms of the country it comes from.、Mm. So then you might start talking about oh, Italian food,、mm. Japanese food, Korean food, rather than pork or beef or salad or something like that. So、mm -hmm. food is a big area, but when we talk about in it in terms of. We're talking about sort of categories or groupings or smaller families. For example, this class is great in terms of the teacher, but I'm really not interested in the subject. So、mm. it's a good class, but not because of what we read or the homework or my classmates. The teacher—that's the category we're talking about. Right. Okay. So let's talk a bit more about how Thomas is doing this. Okay. Okay. So the article says, for example,、mm -hmm. on one page,、mm -hmm. the book reads, "Red is sour, like unripe strawberries." And as sweet as watermelon. So、mm -hmm. I don't know if you can see it on here. Yeah, it's a black page. But we page. have, if we flip it this way, maybe、mm -hmm. we have a strawberry here in the picture.、Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to talk about unripe strawberries. So the the green, the sort of、right. pale pale colored ones.、Mm -hmm. so、okay. So unripe is an adjective. It means not ripe.、Mm -hmm. That un means not. An unripe fruit is still hard, and it's not quite ready to eat.、Mm. If you eat it, you might get a、mm, look a little, on your face. A sour, maybe.、Mm -hmm. And it 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 doesn't taste sweet yet. That's、yeah. that's what we're saying when it's unripe. It's not sweet enough to eat yet.、Mm -hmm. It's not exactly ready. Think of a green banana、mm. or something like that. Kind of, kind of hard when、it's, you bite into hard, it. It's hard. It's not sweet like、mm -hmm. a banana is, and you、right. leave it for a few days. That's often what you do with an unripe. Fruit, you leave it on the tree, or you pick it, but then you leave it out for a while, a day、mm -hmm. or two. Then it might ripen, and then、mm -hmm. that's what we would say: we would ripen, and then it would be ripe, and、yeah. then you can eat it. And then it's red, and it's delicious, or yellow、mm -hmm. and delicious. All right. Well, you can see that Erin has stolen my book, and as she reads it, we'll look at the next sentence. It says, "Besides taste, the book associate, associates this color with how it feels too." All right. So we were talking about red. Remember, talking about red, but without talking about the color. And we talked about taste, the taste of those strawberries. Well, besides taste, the book associates the color red with how it feels too. We'll get to that later, but we have this word besides. B e s i d e s. B e s i d e s. This is a preposition. Now, notice it's similar to beside, like the bank is beside or next to the toy store. But here we're using it to talk about words or ideas or things that we're not including in the conversation. Maybe we've talked about them before. Maybe it's very obvious and that's an easy thing to think about. So it's not the most important thing we're talking right now. You know, you might say, for example, beside. Besides your family, who do you usually spend holidays with? Of course, you spend holidays with your family. But what are some of the other people? Who are some of the other people you spend your holidays with? All right. So we're sort of putting the family to the side. Like in that previous sentence, we were putting the taste of a color. On the side, and we were talking about color in other ways. For example, we could say, besides going to the gym twice a week, Violet hikes on the weekends. So obviously, she goes to the gym. We all know that. So we're not going to include that in our conversation. So yes, we just learned that besides taste, the book associates. This color with how it feels. Now we have that phrase to associate with or be associated with,、right. which is just another similar form.、Mm -hmm. What exactly does that phrase mean? Okay, so when one thing associates with something else,、mm -hmm. the first thing is related or connected with that thing in some way. Okay, so here we're saying that a color can also be related to how something feels. Oh, because earlier we talked about how it's associated、mm -hmm. with how it tastes. But besides that, let's not、mm -hmm. talk about the taste part. Let's, let's talk, talk about, about how the color 
feels.、Mm -hmm. Okay, here's an example. Nelson's problems at school are associated with his lack of studying. That means his problems、mm. are related to his lack of studying. Oh,、mm. All right, all right. Let's get back to the article and see what happens in the book. It says the main character Thomas says that red. Hurts when he finds it on his scraped knees.、Yeah. Ah, interesting. So we're not talking about the color red, how、mm -hmm. it might taste, how it might make you think of strawberries or apples or something. But this is more associating red with pain,、yeah. right? Red hurts sometimes.、Mm -hmm. When does it hurt? Well, as Thomas explains, it hurts when you scrape your knees or scrape any other part of your skin. Scrape here is a verb. S C R A P E. Basically, to scrape is to rub something against. A rough surface, so it damages the thing that is being rubbed. If you've、mm -hmm. ever fallen off your bike or tripped and fallen when you were running or even walking,、mm -hmm. you know the, the the road, the street, the sidewalk will scrape against the skin of your knee. It hurts a it lot. It does. It really isn't going to kill you, but <laughs>、right. it hurts a lot because it's the skin that's being、mm -hmm. rubbed or ripped or scraped away. So、right. it's very painful. And of course, what happens after that? The blood.、Mm. The blood. What color is the blood? Red. red. Exactly. All right. Okay. Red、mm. is pain. Okay. Well, we can. I'm sure we can just think of it in terms of strawberries. Well, that's you know,、better. fire. If fire is red. It、it's、hurts、true. too. So it's not a bad idea. Okay. Well, that's、yes. all the time we have to talk about、oh, our book today. But I don't to talk about how purple tastes. Oh, well, maybe we can do that in our for you chat. Okay. All right. We're gonna say goodbye now. Stay tuned for our for you chat, and we'll be right back.